Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow, and we're going to have a phone guest today, Jerry. Who, who are we going to have? Tim Kolomainen. He's the editor of the Breakdown Sports Media, which do hockey books for state high school league. That's the book right All there. All the high schools in the state. There's hundreds of pictures in there. It's a recap of every team, the key players, everything. And we'll give you information how to buy this book and how to get previous issues. It's the best book out there in high school hockey by far. Every coach, every team has this book. So Nice section here. Uh, Duluth Marshall testing the waters. Small Duluth private school jumps to class AA hockey with budding successes. Got a photo there of some of the boys up at Marshall and... Uh, so when does this come out? This is volume it comes out 10. In the, it comes out in the fall, right before the season. Okay, right so there's the one volume per season. Right. Okay. Yes. And it comes out just before the season, and we'll right. be talking to the uh, the editor, the right. uh, publisher. And then right uh, now it's $20 cheaper because it's at the end of the season. But yeah. this is a Bible of high school hockey, and everyone that loves hockey or just to know who played this year and that, you'll have all the names, all the players, pitchers and that. It's great. Over the weekend, the UMD Bulldogs were idle in NCHC play. Uh, they uh, ended up in fifth place after the other teams played. Uh, Saints Cloud State is in first place uh, with 40 points. Denver second with 37. North Dakota third with 27. Western Michigan 27 points in fourth place. And then UMD in fifth place, 8, 10, and 0, 24 points, 14, 3, and 3 overall. Now, the Bulldogs have an opportunity this weekend, Jer, to uh, – Get a couple of points. Uh, what is it now? Three points for a win? Yes. Yeah. So Miami comes to town. Last place, Miami. Well, they have to win. There's no ifs, buts about it. If they, want, if they don't win this series with Miami, it's going to come down that they're going to have to win their playoffs and go down to the frozen face-off yeah. down in the Twin Cities at uh, XL and win that to get to the regions. Yeah, and they've done that in the past, but that's yeah. the hard way to do yeah, it. Yeah, you don't want to do it that way. No, you don't. If they can win these two games, <clears throat> go to Western Michigan, win one, come back home and win against Omaha, they're in. They're going to be in. Western Michigan uh, will play St. Cloud State this weekend. Uh, Colorado College will play Denver, and the Bulldogs will host Miami um, Colorado College just snuck a win past uh, North right. Dakota last weekend. I tell you what, the parity in that league, yeah. this league is so close. I mean, there's no easy weekend. So Miami will be at Amsoil Arena this Friday and Saturday. And uh, Bulldogs, uh, this is a six-point weekend for them. I hope so. Yeah. They're home. they got a show now. they and, got a week uh, off. So. You know, again, 24 points. Uh Three points behind uh, North Dakota and Western Michigan, both with 27 points. Yeah. Great. So let's win. WCHA, uh, Northern Michigan, first place in the WCHA. You know, I look at the teams in the WCHA, and it, yeah. it's just such a different makeup. Minnesota State second. Bowling Green third. Uh, uh, who is this? Uh, Bemidji State fourth. Uh, Michigan Tech fifth. Alabama Huntsville in sixth place. With nine wins ahead of Ferris State and Lake Superior State, Alaska, Anchorage, and Alaska. But Alabama Huntsville, huh? Yeah. Minnesota State, though, is uh, fifth in the pairwise and fifth in the USCHO polls. Where's so. Northern Michigan? Northern is way down. They're down in 16 so and 17. First place in the WCHA. Yeah, league. but they're going by every game, you know. Oh, I understand. But yeah. again, everyone plays one another right. inside this league. Right. Okay. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, UMD women, a uh, 5 nothing loss to Wisconsin. And then a 3-3 tie on Saturday night here at uh, Amsoil, but uh, they lost in a shootout to Wisconsin. But Wisconsin, they are far and above everybody right. in that league right now. They got a great goalie, and I tell you what, they got some big girls on that team too. Uh, Bulldogs are in fourth place, the Bulldog women, that is. Uh, they're 8-11-3. Uh, NCHA Division Three, uh, Saints Scholastica Saints, nine, eight, and one, sixth place in the NCHA, nineteen points. Uh, CSS will play at Marion, uh, starting the NCHA tourney uh, this weekend, 
First place, Adrian, 17-1-0. Oh. They've never won a national championship. <laughs> I think they've been runner-up once or twice, okay. but uh, Adrian on the verge of doing something they haven't done, and that's win a championship. How about the Minnesota Wild? The Minnesota yeah. Wild opened up a five-game homestand against the Arizona uh, Coyotes and lost yeah. to the worst team in the league oh my at God. home. Oh, my God. Oh, I couldn't believe it. A 4-3 well, to three overtime stop. Wow. The worst thing about that game, they, gave, they, were, they had 3 nothing. Yeah. First half of the game, 3 nothing, and they let them back in, back in, back in, and they <laughs> scored right at the end of the game, last yeah. minute of the play. Yeah. I think it was 19, something like that. Yeah. And uh, then in overtime. We're not, do, we're not good a lot of times in overtime. Yeah, I know. That was a big letdown. But they didn't let us down entirely because they came back with a nice 3 nothing win over Chicago. Right. And Devin Dubnik stood on his head in that game. 44 shots, yep. 44 saves. Second most uh, saves for a shutout for a while. Really? Early. Yep. Big crowd that night, too. Yep. 19,200 and some. Wild uh, continue the five-game homestand. They'll play the New York Rangers uh, Tuesday. Uh, there's going to be a local kid in the roster. Is he still going to be up uh, Tuesday when the Wild host the Rangers? Pionk? Pionk, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I he came so. up. He came up the other night. I hope and, so. And uh, we got another Minnesota kid that uh, Wild brought up, Nick Sealer. E EP, Eden Prairie boy, and they played over at Omaha, and then he transferred over to the Gophers. So he, they brought him up. You know, it's funny. You and I had talked a couple of shows back, and I mentioned Mario Lucia, and he ends up getting traded right. in this move to get this defenseman, Victor Louvre, yeah. here. And uh, so Mario Lucia gone out of the organization. Right. And then this uh, new defense man, they threw him down into Iowa. <laughs> Victor Louvre. So the Wild uh, are still in the midst of a five-game homestand. Uh, game number three, New York Rangers Tuesday. They'll play the Caps at home uh, on Thursday the 15th. And then the Ducks come to town Saturday the 17th, 1 o'clock start. Yep. Anaheim and the Wild. Uh, Wild have an opportunity here to uh, get some points, badly yeah. needed points. And then they finally go. Then they go on the road. Finally, after five games at home, they go next Monday. They have the New York Islanders at New York, and that game's set for noon. Is that President's Day Monday? Is that why they're? It's a noon game on a Monday. Must I'm not be? sure, Jer. That's a that's interesting. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Um, noon. Really? Huh. Well, let me call up the editor of the breakdown, and we'll talk some high school hockey. Minnesota Wild, uh, currently a 30, 19, and 6. 66 points, good for fifth place in the Central Division. Last 10 games, the Wild have gone 6, 2, and 2. Uh, Nashville's topped the Western Conference. Uh, Nashville followed by Winnipeg, St. Louis, Dallas, and then the Wild in fifth place. A thousand you, fans, over a thousand fans, showed up for a cold outdoor practice in St. Louis Park on Sunday. But uh, we're going to go to our guest. We have, uh, well, Jerry, introduce our guest. This is Tim Kolomainen. He's the editor of the Breakdown Sports Media, which uh, put out uh, different sports, basically hockey, Minnesota hockey, high school hockey, boys, and now they have girls. And what other sports do you do? Softball and football? Uh, I think that's, that's it. it, although you know, we're getting so many right now, I'm starting to lose track of what season we're in. Oh, Tim, i got a question for you. I'm looking through this book. There's a lot of work that goes into this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there is. There is. A lot of, uh, of legwork, and I do get a lot of help from the coaches, too. I, I do appreciate all the, uh, all the information that they give me, and uh, I just have to make it look pretty once they give it to me, basically. And you've got a lot of stats in here, a lot of data, if you will. Accuracy has to be a crucial thing, something that you uh, really have to uh, pay attention to. Yeah, and I will, you know, some of the sports are a lot better at keeping uh, stats than others. And, and, you know, some stats are a lot more subjective in different sports, too. You have to, uh, scoring a goal is obvious. Everybody knows who scored the goal, but, uh, you know, second assists in hockey are, are one of those things that you always wonder about. And, you know, assists in basketball or, you know, there's all sorts of things. But, yeah, it's, it's something we, uh, we definitely take seriously. We, we look through it as closely as we can, and we try our best. Who's the most helpful person on your staff? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got to be my, my right-hand man, Tony Colley. He's the, he's the guy that kind of keeps me honest most of the time. He, uh, 
we do travel around the state a lot for photo shoots. You know, we take pictures of the top kids. He's the guy that kind of keeps all the paperwork. Uh, you know, he keeps it going for me, and he, he makes sure that I don't lose anything, which I, you know, I'm not saying I've been known to do that, but uh, he makes sure everything stays on track. And, uh, you know, he's been invaluable to me so far. How can uh, anyone, hockey fans or hockey parents or coaches or whatever, get this book? Yeah, we only sell it online. Uh, you can't actually buy it anywhere else in a store, so it's just online on our website. And that's, uh, I'll go slowly on the address because it's a long one here. It's, it's BreakdownSportsUSA.com. And uh, there's a link up there to, to our publications, and it kind of describes each of them. And, and there's a link to order the books, and then there's also links for the coaches to submit information, and then the, the top players also to submit their Q&A and and photos if they can't attend a shoot, that sort of thing. But you'll see the whole list of the books on that website. Say that website one more time, Tim. Yeah, I'll go slow again, too, here. Breakdown Sports USA.com. Okay. And uh, can uh, anyone call your office or anything? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to break a cardinal rule. I'll give you my cell phone number. How about that? I'm oh. going to put it out over the air for you here. Okay. 763-258-3116. And I'm always happy to talk to anybody about uh, high school sports. That's for sure. You know, I'm kind of curious, Tim. Uh, Breakdown Sports Media, again, a very uh, slick publication. What what caused you to do this? How did you get into this? This is volume 10 was somebody else doing something like this that didn't meet your standards, perhaps? How did this get going? Well, you know, there's a long story behind this. Uh, Justin Hegna uh, from Becker, Minnesota, he was the girls' basketball coach there at, at Becker, won a state title, I think, back in uh, 2007. He actually, on a road trip through South Dakota, saw the, uh, there's a, like a Dakota hoopster or something like that. The Dakotas do a, a basketball book every year. And he saw that, and he and his buddy said, well, why can't we do this in Minnesota? And so 16 years ago, he started doing the boys and girls basketball books. About 12 years ago, he kind of brought me on board to help out. 10 years ago, because I'm a hockey guy, he, he, we thought, well, let's do some hockey and volleyball. And then it's just kind of blown up from there. In fact, it, it's so big now that he runs the event side of it. You know, we run basketball and volleyball events. And then I've taken over the uh, publication side. So all the, all the well, now seven books that we do, I, I take care of that side. You know, i got to tell you, Jer, this almost, this is like a must-have item right. for high school hockey fans, parents, right. coaches. Uh, this is, uh, you're doing a good thing here, uh, Tim, with this, uh, with this publication. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's exciting because we've got all seven of them look like that. That's the fun thing, too, is. People see one and they think, wow, this is great. This must take a lot of time. And then I show them, oh, yeah, we also do these seven. And it's, 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 I kind of sacrilegiously call it the, uh, the Bible of uh, Minnesota high school hockey, at least this version. So. Because this is getting toward the end of the season, you discount this book right now, don't you? I do, yeah. Once we got past the new year, I, I dropped the price. Uh, I took 10 bucks off the price. And then once we get past the season, it's going to drop even further. I do have some old issues up for sale right now. And how much do the uh, old ones cost? The, uh, the old ones are 29 right now, so you can and, get those for 29 And what does this year's cost? Normally, it's it's uh, 49 bucks for each. Okay. And then, right, so I got 10 bucks off. Of okay, great. Of the, this year's version is 39 yep. Well, this book has everything. You have the preseason rankings on both Class AA, A. you got all the school teams with... Pictures of players from every team. Um, some of the, everyone that played the year before will have their stats. You have the all-state team. What you think in both classes? By the way, I uh, voted for Mr. Hockey, and you guys uh, hit that pretty good. I mean, you have a lot of players on your list, but uh, you got six out of the seven. I only get to vote for seven. <laughs> and, and then you got yeah, X. What did I pick? Twelve. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, I like to pick about 10, 12. But uh, extensive section. This is right now is my time of the season. My favorite time is the section and your preview. So let, I want to test you a little bit what you think now. What are some of the teams that you think that didn't do as good as you thought and some of the teams that did better than you thought? 
Well, you know, I'm actually, uh, before I ask, answer that question completely, I'm going to say I am a Duluth East graduate, and I now live in Moorhead. And that's <laughs> going to taint one of these answers that I give you right now. So if you look at the book, you'll see I rank Moorhead number one in the state coming into the year. Okay. And, um, you know, they've obviously dropped into the back half of the top ten, and sometimes almost completely out of the top ten. Uh, they're surging a little bit now, but I thought... I didn't think they'd be uh, they'd have the ups and downs that they've had this year. I mean, they're on they're clearly on a high now. They've won seven in a row. They've only given up five goals in their last seven games uh, since they lost to Brainerd back in, in mid January. So they look like they've kind of righted the ship. But I thought all year long they'd be very stable. Right. They've got a lot of seniors. I I did uh, the same. So I kind of thought that was yeah yeah. I had them and in then, the top uh, five. They, the, they, I mean they. They were a state championship uh, team last year, a couple goals shy of Grand Rapids. So I, right. I thought they'd be a top four team all year long, along with Edina and East and, and those teams. But uh, they, they dropped back a little bit. Right. And I guess part of that is probably the fault of Brainerd, which is the other on the opposite side, the, kind of a team that surprised me a little bit this year. I kind of thought they would be maybe a year away from making a lot of noise in Section 8, but Clearly, uh, it looks like Dave Ossoff. There's got something going there. They're right. Eighteen and five. They've won eleven of their last twelve, and uh, yeah, they're going to be a bear in the in the Section Eight playoffs for uh, for Moorhead. What I like about that Brainerd team is that they have three lines, and you can't tell the difference between one and three, and they're very team oriented. I saw them very early in the season when they came to Moorhead and played, and uh, Moorhead pretty much handled them. It was a 5 nothing game, and, and they really got no offense going at all in that game. And I, I talked to Dave Oss after the game, and he said, it's really early. You know, we had a lot of guys that were playing football. They, they've barely been on skates, you know, since football season ended. And he said, we're going to be a lot better by the end of the year. This, this isn't the team you're going to see. And, uh, yeah, he, he knew what he was talking about because they, they came back in mid-January and, and uh, kind of whitewashed Moorhead 5 nothing over there in Brainerd. So they, they returned yeah. the favor. We'll see who wins the uh, right. rubber match maybe if they meet that Section 8 final. Well, some teams I got for that played a lot better than I thought are Creighton, Andover, Rosemont, and, like you said, Brainerd. Uh, teams that I have that I thought could have played better but didn't so far. But the playoffs, it's a different story sometimes. Eden Prairie. Hill Murray and Maple Grove. What are your yeah, thoughts on those teams? On the, uh, those, when you mentioned Eden Prairie and Hill Murray, those were the other two that I kind of highlighted. I had them in the top ten, and they're both under five hundred right now. Yeah, I mean, they're young. Everybody thought losing uh, Casey Middlestead was going to be tough for Eden Prairie, but I, I thought they had enough back that uh, you know that it wouldn't be that they wouldn't necessarily struggle as much as they have to this point. But obviously, you know, when you have a guy like that, you really lean on him. And I, maybe they're still trying to figure out exactly how, you know, how to power an offense, how to how to get a team going without having a guy like that, just to, just to lean on when things are going poorly. Who uh, who takes all these photographs? Do some of the schools provide you with some of these photographs? You're pretty much looking at me. <laughs> I a lot of miles on that car every year. <laughs> That's for sure. Boy, I got to tell you, Tim, this is uh, this is pretty impressive. I'm I'm overly impressed. So again, if you want to check this book out, go to the website breakdownsportsusa.com, breakdownsportsusa.com, and uh, you can get it now at a discounted price because we're uh, just about through the regular season. Any surprises? Anything that was in here that uh, uh, maybe came back and, and surprised you at this point of the season so far, or? You know, this is the fun point of the year where I start to look at my preseason predictions and then I say, okay, you know, how, how foolish do I look on some of these? Some years I, I, I get pretty close. I, I feel pretty good about the way things turned out. This year, you know, we mentioned some of those teams that I thought would be better than they are and then some of those teams that surprised me just a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to page through. We do a little prediction segment at the front where I ask a few people around the hockey community what they think is going to happen this year. And... Uh, Sometimes, you know, like I said, sometimes we look a little bit foolish and sometimes we don't. I, I'm kind of happy, uh, you know, as an East guy, I named a sleeper, a favorite sleeper team this year, and I named Duluth Marshall as my favorite sleeper team. <laughs> and I think they've really, you know, they've, they've had some games where they, they look like world beaters there, and uh, I, I'm kind of proud about that one. So I'm surprised in a good way but then by Duluth Marshall. Right. Well, you got to compile this information in October. This was four months ago, uh, dare I say last year. <laughs> yeah, well, we start taking uh, uh, photos. You know, we invite the kids to photo shoots. 
pretty much the end of June. So we're yeah, I'm already multiple months ahead of time on that. Right, I see you at the Elite League all the time in the fall, where a lot of the top uh, elite players are there and taking pictures and that. So this is a yeah, yeah this is the bi- this is a buy. Bi- it's like uh, you go to high school and you get a yearbook for your high school. You if you play hockey or anything to do with hockey, this is the book that keep. Because ten years down the line, you want to go back to this. Well, we can go to we gone to the Wild Games, and they have books like this for the NHL and what have you. And this is high school hockey, and I think Tim too. This speaks to the the relevance, if you will, of high school hockey in our state. And truly, uh, this is another uh, uh, pillar, if you will, in the greatness here in the state of hockey. Yeah, it's. I mean. There's a reason that uh, the Minnesota hockey is as well known as it is. It's kind of funny too. We, I lived in Connecticut for a while. I worked in a newspaper in Connecticut, and I covered their high school hockey tournament out there. And uh, you know, it's it's probably a equivalent to maybe a Bantam B level of play. <laughs> it's not bad, but it's nothing like what we have. And I I had my parents send me a back in the old days, a, you know, a VHS tape of the. Um, of the actual Minnesota State Tournament. I brought it into the office one day, and I had it running on the TV there. And uh, the guys were looking at it in the office and said, what is this? Is this a college game, or what is this? I said, no, this is Minnesota high school hockey. And they looked at me like I was goofy. They said, no, that's, those aren't high school kids. They don't skate like that in high school. I said, yeah, they do in Minnesota. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our uh, high school hockey uh, boy with, uh, b- both boys and girls. And that was going to be my next question. I haven't had a chance to look through all this. Is this just boys hockey? Uh, is there talk maybe of doing something for the girls? Or how, what do you think on that? Yeah, we are actually going to do one for the girls for the very first time this coming winter, uh, that 2018-2019 winter. So we've, we've done the boys book for 10 years now. So next year will be the 11th annual edition of it. And uh, so it's, it's time. I've talked to the Girls Coaches Association before. Nothing's ever really gotten off the ground. Um, but it's time. You know, after 10 years of doing the boys' book, I, I think uh, it's time to recognize some of the girls out there, too, and, and get that going. I know I've already got uh, plans to attend the, the Girls' State Tournament this year. I'll, I'll take a ton of photos. Uh, I was at the Girls' Schwan Cup getting photos this year, too, and uh, travel around a little bit and, and catch a few girls' games. And so, yeah, we're, we're full speed ahead on a girls' book. Uh, we've got uh, Coach Mike Randolph, who is, uh, has he surpassed Willard Eichela now? No, he's tied. He's tied with Willard Eichela. My goodness, Mike Randolph. Uh, a legend. <laughs> well, he really is. He really is. And and passing Willard Eichela, a legend in himself. And uh, you're going to have to update your coaching records next season. <laughs> I will, yeah. Every year I steadily move Randolph up those ranks, too. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I think when I first started doing the book 10 years ago, he wasn't even on the list, and now he's, uh, he's almost to the top of it. And if he keeps coaching, which, you know, it doesn't seem like he's slowing down at all. If he keeps going, he, who knows where he's going to end up at the end of his career. Yeah, five, if he can then last five more years, he can probably go over the top. Yeah, he'll only be uh, less than 100 wins shy right. of, uh, of, uh, of Grasso and uh, Nystrom up there. So, just, so they're, they're both just barely over 700. Any predictions for the Class AA uh, tournament? Who's going to be there? Or any predictions on any upsets? Yeah, well, I, I hate to keep going back to it, but Brainerd has obviously proven they can upset Moorhead. Um, I still would predict Moorhead to get out of that section, but it, it certainly isn't as easy as it looked like it might have been at the beginning of the year. Um, I, I don't know yet what to make of this uh, minnetonka Edina rivalry. Obviously, right. they could both meet at the state tournament again, but yeah. <laughs> every time I've seen a little bit or all of all three games they played against each other, and so, they look like two entirely different teams each, team I, each time I see them right. play, so I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> I was at all three games, um, and it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they, one of them just completely takes care of business, and they come back two weeks later, and they play, and, and uh, it's completely flipped. It's uh, I guess that's what makes uh, high school hockey yeah. a little bit more unpredictable, too. It's, you know, it is just kids. They're not grown. You know, they're not full-grown men yet. And sometimes emotions go up and they go down. And, and um, you know, a team gets on a roll or, or things don't bounce their way. And it's, it, it's a little bit different than uh, than you see in maybe pro hockey. Yeah, and Duluth East, I think there's four teams that can beat Duluth East in that section. That's going to be a tough section. Yeah, that might be the uh, top to bottom. That might be the toughest one in the state, too. I mean, you mentioned Andover as a surprise team. 
Right. Um, you know, they look terrific right now. You know, Grand Rapids has been down, but I wouldn't want to mess with uh, with uh, Gabe Holm in the playoffs there as a goalie. I mean, he could steal a game all by himself, and, and we've seen Duluth Marshall, what they've been up to this year right. already. And uh, Duluth East has uh, Grand Rapids probably, most likely, on the uh, first game in the quarterfinals. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, unreal. I, yeah, I've, I've actually been kind of looking at that, too. The uh, We're, what, about a week out from uh, yep. the end of the regular season, and I, I, I'm starting to look at those section beatings, too, because this is my favorite time of the year, too. Yeah. Just seeing how things match up and who might get who. Well, Section 7 does the uh, computer rankings this year. The I think they're the only section that does that. And that's the way it looks right now. Is Rapids is going to be playing East on the first quarterfinal game on Tuesday the 20th. That's probably not what uh, Mike Randolph would like, I'm guessing. No, hot, that, that's like I say. A hot goalie can do a lot in, this, in the playoffs. <laughs> And I, I, one of the other sections, too, we mentioned Edina. I'd like to see why that up against Edina in a section final again, too. Um, that's been, uh, that's yeah. been a roadblock for Edina teams in the right. last couple of years. And yeah. most likely that might happen. Or so, well, It's either with Zeta, I think, or Creighton. Yep, yep. And then uh, St. Thomas Academy out of three, they're looking pretty strong. I, yeah, that would be a surprise if they didn't get there out of section three. Right. Um, you know, section four. Uh, White Bear Lake, obviously, at this point, looks like the favorite there. Right. Um, I wouldn't count on Hill Murray, even though they're under 500. Right. Stillwater's kind of had some moments this year, too. I think it's probably one of those three out of there. Tim, we got to go. We thank you for your time. BreakdownSportsUSA.com. BreakdownSportsUSA.com. Great book, Tim. We'll put it on our website, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Sounds perfect. Always happy talking hockey. Yep. Thanks, Tim. We got a goal. We want to thank the staff at PAC TV, where this program is produced in City Hall in downtown Duluth. You can catch us on YouTube, find us on Facebook, and like us, and MinnesotaHockeyConnection.com. And Jerry, we'll be back here next week to drop the puck. Yes, we will. See you at the rink.